Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I am so excited because I have a very good friend on the show today, and she is absolutely amazing. Her name is Gigi Diaz, and she is a media and business coach, and she is just phenomenal. And today, she's going to talk about developing a brand that sells. This is something that's so important because there's a lot of myths and, and misconceptions out there about how to sell how to get the right audience. And there are so many things that are just not right. And she's going to actually decipher the, the true things that you really need to focus on and the things that you don't need to focus on. So listen to her because her advice is phenomenal. She is a success in her world and she's going to show you how to be a success today. So Gigi, I am so excited to have you on the show today. You are amazing and I love you. And I am so happy to have you here. Tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It's always an honor for me when an amazing powerhouse woman like you takes the time to offer me their audience and to get me into their community. So hi, and thank you. Um, a little bit about me. See, that's the one question I'm never prepared to answer. <laughs> so much. It's like, how much time do we have? Um, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you, uh, the both sides of me. So I began a career in media accidentally when I was a literal child. So I've been working on television and children's shows since I was about five to six years old and fast forward, you know, um, I, I started because I, I was learning to dance flamenco. And so my dance studio, I was born in Cuba and my dance studio in Cuba would do competitions internationally. And so, you know, fast forward many, many years, I come to the United States. And I was put to compete on a very popular uh, Spanish language television show called Salvador Gigante. And I won first place and the production team called out my mom and they were like, listen, you know, she's very talented and we have a crew for kids, like kid performers. And we train them. We keep teaching them different styles of dance, teach them how to be on, you know, on TV. And she obviously has been on TV before because we can tell all the stuff that she's doing. We'd love to bring her on. And, you know, we have like a, like a, it was like a dance academy where they trained all the little kids to keep doing TV yeah. stuff. And my mom was like, nah, it's not going to happen. We can't afford that. We literally had just gotten here from Cuba a few months before. And so they offered me a, uh, a scholarship. And so I continued to work through my training on television, learning public speaking, working cameras, commercials, stuff like that. And then when I got to high school was when the second fork of my life kind of um, expanded. And my mom was like, well, we're opening a newspaper. And you're the only one that knows how to use a computer. So you have to do the graphic design and in Hispanic families, mom wants to do this thing and everyone has to be involved. It's like, there is no, there is no way to say no to mom, right? Everything oh, yeah. is a big family affair. And so I was like, I want to do it. I'm already busy. I'm going to school. I was in a singing dancing group called fresh and we were performing on shows like the two hour tour with Christina Aguilera performing for, you know, Beyonce's dad, who at the time was her producer. Like I was busy. She's like, yeah. bad. the guy's coming tomorrow and I only have three hours that I can afford to teach him. So you need to learn how to do this in three hours. Like, this is nonsense. You know, all the protesting within 30 minutes of working with the guy who trained me, who was like teaching me how to do the graphic design. I was immediately obsessed mm -hmm. and I fell in love with being able to put together the publication. And so the newspaper became like my obsession. So yeah, I'd go to school and I was in my singing, dancing group and still performing on stages and stuff like that. But then as I grew within the newspaper, I was doing the graphic design. Then I started writing in the newspaper. Then I started selling ads for the newspaper because my mom, she was paying me for doing the graphic design, which I thought was nice. Um, but then she was like, well, if you bring in ads, I'll give you a percentage of the ads. And so I would, I would go and sell ads. I was 16 years old and I would cold call and sell ads to these. It was the wild, like, I look back at that now and I was like, I had a set on me at 16. <laughs> <laughs> now I think about it and I'm like, that is so courageous. What was I thinking? And anytime that I'm a little scared of trying something new now, I'm like, well, 16 year old me would not have given a shit. <laughs> like 16 year old me would have already taken off on that road running. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, in that being in that world and print journalism and, and still on TV and doing commercials, 
um, eventually I started reporting. And so I started doing interviews on the newspaper uh, to, you know, high, high level celebrities, especially in the Spanish language world and in the Latino community with like Carlos Vives and Paulina Rubio and them. And so TV stations would want to pick up my interviews and I'd go and talk about it or I would pitch them my interviews. And now I was doing print and TV and then radio found me. And so um, it found me accidentally. And what ended up happening was when I finished high school, um, my mom was like, so you're going to go to college. Right. And I was like, yeah, but I'm going to open a business. And she's like, yeah, no, you're going to college. She's like, I don't want to hear it. No distractions, no BS. And I was like, well, I have to do something because I had college uh, scholarships, but I needed to buy books. I needed money for gas. I needed money to eat, you know? And yeah. so we, I opened, uh, I, I talked to my mom and I was like, well, I need to open a dance studio. Cause that's in my mind, listen to how insane this is. In my mind, all I knew how to do was dance because that's what I'd been doing since I was four or five years old, what led me to TV and all the other things. And so I was like, well, the only thing I know how to do is dance. And I had in my mind, since I'd only ever done all of the graphic design and the journalism stuff under the umbrella of like my mom's newspaper, I didn't even realize that that was an actual career job thing. To me, it was just like, here's something I can do and I make some money, but I never thought of it as like massively lucrative also because I wasn't getting paid big bucks at eight, 17, 18 years old at this point, right? I was getting paid okay, but everybody knew I was little, the little girl. So you pay yeah. the little girl like a little girl despite the work yeah. she's bringing in is not little girl work, you know, which is fine. And so I opened my dance studio and I was going to school. I was going to FIU full time and my goal was to study journalism. And so- I'm studying journalism. I am, you know, running my business. My business celebrated 20 years last September. So that's also something I look back at and I'm like, what? Why did I do that? That's so crazy. All the times yeah. I wanted to set that thing on fire. Look, I'm so glad I didn't. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Never with anybody inside, just to be clear. <laughs> there were many times that I was like, I'm done with this. Um, and so, you know, you fast forward and the business has been running. I was still doing, uh, you know, my journalism stuff that was always going to be my actual career. And yeah. then radio finds me and I go from television to radio, working with organizations like Radio Disney, iHeartRadio. And then there was a point in the middle of all that when I was doing television and radio and running the business and picking up quote unquote opportunities, right? Which I, I say that in air quotes because not every opportunity actually is an opportunity. Nine yes. times out of 10 is just a shiny distraction. And yeah, I right. ended up working myself into an ER. I lost my vision while I was driving. I could hear the cars zooming past me and I could not see the highway. It all looked like, you know, when you rub your fingers really, really hard on your eyes and all you open your eyes and all you see is like black little dots and you can't see anything else. That's yeah. what it looked like. And I immediately was like, that's it. I'm dying. You know, like I have a tumor. I have some, something's wrong with me. And what I realized when, after, you know, getting checkups and all the things is my body was giving in to all the stress. I was overworked. I was literally surviving on protein bars and energy drinks and right. something had to change. And that's when my entire life kind of just stopped. And I was like, why am I doing this? I was losing my hair. I hadn't had a period for like three months. And I knew I wasn't pregnant because I wasn't with anybody. And yeah. it, to me, it was just like, nah, it'll come back. No big deal. And my health was just so far away from my priorities that it led me to complete burnout. Right. And that's when I stopped and I had to ask myself, like, why am I doing all this? What's the point to this? And I realized yeah. I was chasing everybody else's definition of success except my own. And right. that's when my life took a complete turn. I had to unlearn and relearn a lot of different elements of who I was and what I wanted out of life. And when I did all of that unlearning and relearning, that's when my current business, Seizing Happy, came about. Mm -hmm. And with Seizing Happy, the goal has always been to help women to achieve their definition of success mm -hmm. with less stress. Because what we believe inside Seizing Happy, our biggest, strongest core value is your business is a reflection of you. Yes. If you are not well, your business won't be well. If you're not growing as a person, your business cannot grow as a business. If you don't know how to set boundaries in life, it's going to be nearly impossible for you to set boundaries in business. And so wherever yeah. you find in your business that you're stuck for growth, yeah, times out of 10, it's because you're stuck in that same area of your life. And so right. what 
seizing happy unique is that we nurture the business and the woman behind the business. In fact, that is our motto, right? And we make sure that the women inside our community are being cared for on both of those ends because business success is more than just systems and marketing and sales and lead generation. Business yes. success comes from you having more time with your family, from you having more money to be able to buy and do the things that you want with whom you want, when you want. Business yes. success is you feeling confident in the decisions that you're making in that business. It's yes. not just the systems that make the business run. Right. So that is our, our, our main focus inside seizing happy. I love it. I love it. And you know, it's amazing. You had, you had, you know, it kind of reminds me like, you know, now I know why we have so much in common when we were talking, you know, our last conversations, you know, because we, we went through different things in life, but we went, you know, we kind of like we overcame, you know, and I think it's amazing, you know, how you recognize that, you know, success, you know, first of all, success for every woman is different. But the the main thing is, you know, women be beat their over the, themselves over the head, thinking that, you know, they have to be, you know, all the way here on, on the top level, they have to be, you know, they're wearing all these hats, they're a mom, they're, you know, they have a partner, they're doing all these things, and they get so involved and they're not taking care of themselves and they are getting burnt out and you know burnt out could lead to even death you know because basically you know what happens is that you just your immune system starts to kick down and it starts to break down and basically you open the doors and you're just saying you know come on in and and do whatever you want you know but you really you you really tapped it on the button when you said it's to be able to do the things you want and have more time for the things you love, you know, and that's so important. And I think women have to understand that. And success is different. The definition of success is different in every woman's eyes. And we have to do it in a, in a way where we can work less and we can reach our goals, be happy with who we are and be able to, you know, live life and not have to work like a dog, you know, and I think that that's great. You know, like, do you have advice for women out there that really want to be, you know, cause there's so many women I know that they bond, you know, we, we, I, we have like groups of women bonding now support groups and stuff like that, but it still is hard because women wear so many hats. What do you tell those women that have so many hats and they're, and they're trying to juggle everything and they're trying to start up and, you know, but to do it in a healthy way so they can be successful, but yet they can take care of themselves so they don't end up hurting themselves in the long run. I think one of the most important things is realizing that we are not responsible for everyone. We are responsible for empowering the people around us to take care of themselves, but we are not in fact responsible for everyone. And right. a really powerful thing to do and to consider is a lot of these women that are wearing multiple hats, not always, but oftentimes a ton of the hats that they're wearing are not their responsibility to wear. Yes. We tend to take on weights that are not our own because we have a really strong back. Women are built with strong backs. We're built with strong backs and, and big, big hearts, right? And so we want to carry the weight of others because our hearts love them so, so much. But what happens is that that starts to weigh us like into the ground, you know, and when then your feet are now stuck in the mud and then you can't get out. And yeah you're not helping others by taking the weight off of their shoulders. You're not teaching them anything. And when mm -hmm. you're no longer around because you've either sunk your weight all the way down into that mud, they yeah. still can't carry their own weight. They still don't know what to do. Right. Right. And so I think what I would tell those women is first to look at the things that are your, that you've taken on as your responsibility, right? Whether this is in your business or this is in your home. Yes. How many of those things can and should be given up to somebody else on your team, right? Yeah. And so, for example, if you are a solopreneur, maybe you don't have somebody on a team yet, maybe you don't have an assistant or something else, then you want to look at the things that you're doing that are not directly giving you an ROI. So sometimes, right. for example, we're running our business, and I was just talking about this with um, with a client. Sometimes we're running our business as the empire that we're hoping for, instead yeah. of understanding that we need to lay out a foundation to hold on to that empire. And so what that looks like is you have the email marketing and the social media and the website and the three offers and the showing up and the creating 30 contents, 30 pieces of content and the, but you don't need all of that. No. 
right now when what you're doing is laying the foundation. And so you're taking on all of this weight that is keeping you from moving forward, yes. right? And so instead, perhaps if you're a solopreneur, take a look at all of the things that you're wearing, all of the hats that you're wearing in your business and say, which one of these is actually making me money right now? And it might be just direct outreach through DM on Instagram. It might be your newsletter. And you don't need to worry about social media right now because you have a really, really powerful email list that's just dying to open your messages. And maybe that's just what you need to focus on for six months, right? And so when it comes to your personal life is... Which people in your life are you carrying on your back that don't need to be carried that perhaps you need to put them down and say, let's take a couple steps together. I can hold your hand, but I can't carry you. Right. Yeah. And that goes for children, for husbands and for parents too. We tend to take on those weights very, very heavily husbands, partners, whatever it is. Right. And so yes. really taking a look at what have you allowed into the space of drainage? Like what things and people are you allowing to drain you? Right. Yes. And then the second thing is once you've done that, like reevaluating of what's happening in your life, then you need to restructure. Right. So I have a system called the three R system, reevaluate, restructure and reset. And I this is something I often use with my clients in every part of life and business. So first you reevaluate what's going on. You got to take a clear look at what's happening. The second yeah. thing is then you restructure. So if you already know that these are the actions or the people that no longer need to be in your life. Now you have space yes. because you've removed these activities, these tasks, these, you know, whatever they are, or you've removed these people or rearranged the way that they show up in your life, the way you allow them into your space and your time. Now with that new space that you've created by giving yourself room, removing things that no longer serve you or people that no longer serve you. Now you have the opportunity to restructure. What will you strategically put in that space now? Right. Is it time to rest? Mm -hmm. Is it time to recalibrate yourself? Yes. Is it time to nurture your body and your mind? Or mm -hmm. is it perhaps another person that can support you, that does believe in you? We've talked about when I had you on the Chats with Gigi podcast, we talked about how you've hired a coach before, somebody mm -hmm. who's able to be your mirror, right? Yeah. Is it a coach? Is mm -hmm. it somebody that's going to be objectively present for you? You know, so now you have space. Now you have room in your life and in your business to do the things that are actually going to get you to where you want to go, to be right. in the space that is actually nurturing for you. And the right. third part of our R's is to reset, right? And so it's not restart like the race where the gun goes off, people take off, and then the race is called because somebody moved or now you have to walk back and you have to get back in position and you have to adjust your, it's not that. It's right. like, it's a reset, like the hairdryer, the mm -hmm. hairdryer short circuits and you push the reset button and that shit just starts right up. This is yes. bouncing all over your sink and you're just, ah, and you get it. It's blowing in your face. There's no thinking about it. Yeah. You just begin. You don't beat yourself up because you started too early because you missed the thing because you took too long. You just start again with right. the reset that you've created for yourself, with the new system that you've created for yourself. And so- that's what I recommend. And it's a system that I coach on all the time. It's it's actually the first proprietary methodology that I ever brought into my business because it works for every part of life and business. So it's the three R's. You reevaluate, restructure, and reset. And when I'm coaching through this, I offer, you know, resources and tools and, and a lot of one-on-one -on -one, um to help expedite the process, but essentially it's applicable even in just knowing what the three R's stand for. And that's yeah. the number one thing that I would recommend is to really assess where you are, you know, detox your space, your in, in all areas of life, and then reset yourself for success and just keep going in that direction. I love it. And I think it's so important because a lot of times, you know, when you're, when you're resetting yourself, I think, you know, it's, this is my opinion. You can tell me what you think, but we also have to evaluate people around us. Who are we around? Are they negative energies or are they positive energies? Are they pulling us down or are they pumping us up to elevate us to the next level? If I fall, are they going to catch me or are they going to step back and they don't want anything to do with it? And then really think about, you know, because when you have negative energy, you bring negative energy into your life. When you have positive energy, positive energy enters your life. So I think sometimes too, is as we're building our business and we're building our foundation and we're resetting ourselves, also reset 
who is around us and, you know, which people are positive people that are going to help us, you know, you know, and guide us and which people are negative that are going to just suck the energy out of us and pull us down. What do you think? I agree with you completely. It's it's one of the things also that we really focus on in seizing happy, and that is building a community for women because we are also told so much things like it's lonely at the top, or mm -hmm. you're the lone wolf is the one that succeeds, or like I don't believe in any of that shit. Nobody can do it alone. There isn't a single successful person out there who did it alone. They yes. did it being surrounded by a team of people who loved and supported them. They did it because they had the mentorship of people who'd done it before, right? They did it because they surrounded themselves with people who believed in the mission, right? And so what ends up happening, and we talk a lot about this inside the Seizing Happy uh, hybrid community, is the people around you can think you're crazy, right? Mm -hmm. But there's two different types of crazy, right? And this is the kind of person that this is why it matters the kind of person that's around you. You decide you want to write a book, right? And you call that one person, you know, the person you're going to call and be like, you know what? I just woke up with the wildest idea today. Yeah. I'm gonna write a book. And that person's going to tell you you're crazy. Nobody yeah. reads books anymore. How are you going to write a book? You have a kid. And what time are you going to write a book? What are you even going to write a book about? You know how long it takes to write a book? And then yeah. how do you, I don't know. How do you make money with a book? You know, I, I, you're, you're crazy. And then there's the other option. There's the other person, right? And you mm -hmm. wake up and you call them and you say, you know what? I just had the wildest idea. I want to write a book. And that person's going to say, you're crazy. What's it going to be about? Have you <laughs> met somebody that has written a book before? Do you need me to take the kids? Are you going to write it on the weekends or at night? Can I babysit for you so you can write it? Am I going to be in your book? <laughs> How can I help you with your book? You're yeah. crazy. They both think you're crazy, but one of them is reflecting the fact that they don't read any books on you. Yeah. And the other one is telling you, you're fucking crazy. This idea is great. I'm all in. How can I help? Mm -hmm. right? And so you want the people who think that your craziness is great. You mm -hmm. want the people that believe in your craziness around yeah. you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have those people right now, that's okay. But yeah. just know that... You not only deserve, but your success requires that you surround yourself with those people because yeah. there's only so many times I think that we can hear somebody around us that we trust tell us yeah. that's never going to work. That's right. never going to work. That's never going to work before mm -hmm. we say, you know what? Maybe you're fucking right. It's never going to work. Right. You know what I mean? And we, and we give into that. Because it's hard to keep your spirits up all the time. It's why it's yeah. important to have somebody there when you say, I don't think this is going to work for them to right. say, no, I remember how excited you were when you called me about this the first time. So let's go back to that. Why did you start this in the first place? What yeah. really drove your soul to do this? Where, right. why do you think it's not going to work? Is it a system that's out of place? Is it a lack of knowledge? Is it something that's missing? How do we find that missing piece? Let me call somebody that I think might be able to help us out. I know someone that did this once, or I know someone that knows someone that did this. Let me make some phone calls. Let's figure it out. Yes. You know? That's it's it is absolutely necessary that you surround yourself with people who think that you're crazy is phenomenal. Yes. Oh, definitely. A hundred percent. You know, and it's good to be crazy. I don't mind being crazy, but you want to be a good crazy and you want people to support that good crazy. You know, it's it's just it's 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 you have to have it. You have to have those people around you to motivate you and to inspire you. You know, it, it, it's so important. Now, when you look at your 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 own community, what are some of the things that you find that a lot of these women entrepreneurs, you know, some of the real the obstacles that really they face on a, on a regular basis? And what are some of the answers that you could give them or some of the advice you could give them to help them? Because I find that a lot of women go through the same type of issues, you know, but they're looking for that advice or just a hint of direction just to get them on the right track. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the most, or there's two really, really common obstacles that, that women face, especially in entrepreneurship. And that is, I don't have time or I don't have money. Mm -hmm. Right. And so when it comes to, I don't have time, this is my favorite one because the truth is that you do have time. You're just not prioritizing it. If everybody opens their phone right now and they go into their settings 
and you check on your settings, how much time you're spending on social media and on other platforms, you will see that you have at least three to five hours a week, minimum. That's like on the low, low end, right? And so this time that you're spending scrolling or watching or doing every Netflix episode that you're watching and nothing against Netflix, I love me some Netflix, right? But every episode of every series that you're watching is an hour away from growing your business. 100%. Right. And so it's really not about I don't have time. It's about you're not maximizing your time and you're not prioritizing what truly matters. And sometimes that comes with a lack of self-belief. Sometimes that comes with like, I don't even really know if it's going to work or I'm too tired. But if you are fueled up in your soul for the thing that you're doing, you will, instead of sitting down for one hour on Netflix, sit down with a piece of paper like this and write down some ideas and say, okay, I'm going to get back to this tomorrow and I'm going to do this for one more hour tomorrow. Right. Right. And, and, and let it slowly build itself out from there. And then the second one is the, I don't have money, right? I don't have money to hire a coach. I don't have money to do these things. And, and and that one is sort of true. It's sort of true because hiring a one, you know, because you've hired coaches before it is a big investment, right? There are coaches who will not work with you for less than a 20 or $30,000 retainer. There are coaches who will only work with you if it's on a monthly basis for 2000 to $5,000 a month. And, And this, this can be a lot of money for people who are just starting right now with that said, how can you be resourceful? right? I am not the one that's going to sit here and tell you, you know, stop splurging on dinners and stop splurging on, you know, coffees out there and stop splurging on red bottom shoes because you already know that. Yeah. You already know that there's a lot of your money that probably is going to nonsense that you don't need that you can reallocate to launching your business and getting the proper mentorship. That's going to help you to get there faster, which in turn is going to cost you less money because the amount of money that you waste when you're making mistakes by throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks, that process of I'm going to figure it out on my own actually costs you more money because you're putting up things that don't work. Secondly, it costs you more money because you're taking longer to become lucrative. So you're literally just leaving money on the table, right? I won't, I won't even get into that because that is obvious. Right. Mm -hmm. It is obvious that there's a lot of splurging that is also happening often. Right now for the other side of that, for the women who maybe are not splurging, they really are tight. Right. How can you be resourceful? Mm -hmm. What skill do you have that you can, that you can really, really rock Yeah, that you can exchange or barter with somebody who has the skill that you need? Right. How can you be resourceful in that way? Is there mm-hmm. a coach that you really want to work with that you might be able to talk to them and say, I want to work with you, but I can't afford your services. How can I be of service in a different way? Is there a way that I could barter with you? Here are the three things I'm really, really freaking good at, mm-hmm. right? How can you be resourceful? Let's say um, you want to talk to, you know, someone that can lead you to an introduction to somebody who might be able to mentor you, yes. right? Maybe it's not even about money then. Maybe it's the introduction. And because you're coming from a dear friend that's introducing Mm -hmm. you, that person might be like, I don't need to charge you. I've done that a million times, right? Where I've had somebody who I know, love and trust tell me, you know, there's this person that wants to work with you. I know them personally. I just don't know what their finances might be because that happens a lot too. A lot of people don't know what's happening in other people's wallets, right? And that person will come to me and say, well, I really do want to work with you, but my price is out of range for them and I'll help them out anyway. I'll find a way to put them in a different tier of my business, right? That is affordable. And that's something else that a lot of people don't know. You, You don't want to assume that any mentor is out of your price range because a lot of us coaches have multiple entry points in our business, right? Like the Seizing Happy Hybrid community, you can get coached by me every single week in a group setting for $44 a month. Right. That's pretty affordable for most people. I don't know any other community where you get a coach who's gonna answer your business and personal growth questions every single week, right? Now that price is going up, but you can get in for that, right? And so it's about being resourceful right? What other price points are there in that mentor's um, entryways for their business in their business structure, right? So you can work with me in the community. You can work with me. I have other programs that range from 200 to $700, right? And so ask around, talk to people who've done what you've done, you know, and then, and, and learn how to 
master the communication and learn how to ask for help. It's not to be a beggar. You know, yes. it's not to like help me out for free because I can't afford it. Oh my gosh. It's how can you be resourceful? Is there an introduction? Is there a service you can barter? Because you have value, even if you don't have the cash up front. Exactly. Exactly. That's so true. You know, it, there's always where there's a will, there, there's a way, you know, you could always, you know, figure out, you know, a, a way to do things. And, and I find that, you know, it, you know, people, people sometimes make their own excuses because they're scared to, you know, they're scared of success. They're scared of what is going to happen when they reach success, you know, um, you know, the two things that, that scare people. And it's funny is, is failure and success. People get scared of actually hitting that level you know, for, you know, and uh, those are two things that people have, you know, it's like the freeing themselves from, from fear and freeing themselves from the fear of, of success and just going for it, just doing it. Because you find that, you know, many people, you know, fear, fear is such a huge thing. Like you talk about fear and people just swarm because, you know, a lot of people fear a lot of different things and, and people do fear success, but we yeah. deserve it. You know? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I've talked about this often and a lot of people think their their fear is a failure, but nothing happens when you fail. Mm -hmm. You try it, you fail, you land in the same place you're already in and you're pretty familiar with where you're at, right? You know that you're here, you know what this consists of, you know why you want to get out. If you fail, you're still here, nothing changes. Exactly. But when you succeed... And you have, let's say, more time. Mm -hmm. That's scary because what are you going to do with that? Right. More terrifying than that is now you have more money. What happened the last time you had money? Right. You throw it all away. Mm -hmm. There is already a subconscious fear there then around money. Right. Have you never had money? Then now you know that if you succeed and you get to that highly coveted six to seven figures, now right. what happens with all that money? If you've never had money, you might think subconsciously, I don't even know what to do with that. Yeah. Right. Do you have beliefs about people with money? Mm -hmm. Right. All those rich people over there taking advantage of the rest of us. Right. If you, right. if you've grown up thinking things like this, or if these thoughts have been given to you by your elders as you were growing up right now, you have an emotional and moral distance from money. And so right. if you succeed, now you're going to become those people with money. You don't even like those people. Subconsciously, you don't want to be those people. Right. So when you succeed, so much has to change. Yes. Your knowledge about money, your knowledge of yourself, your self-evaluations, your definition of money, of people with money, because now you become what you've defined those people as. And it requires a personal expansion. You as a person need to become so much bigger and better if you succeed, because now there's more responsibility, there's more expected of you. Now you need to potentially hire, which means you may potentially need to fire. What was your experience firing before or being fired? What did that feel like? Like we I have so much in our nervous system that we don't even know as they're whispering in our, in the back of our ears. And this is why in the back of our mind rather, and this is why working with a coach who can, who can really sit here and be your mirror in these ways can show you how it's the fear of success that usually is holding you back. But a lot of the times that sounds ridiculous, right? Like, ah, that's so stupid. Why would I be afraid of being a millionaire? Ha, ha, ha. Of course I want to be sitting <laughs> on a yacht, right? Sounds like a ton of fun, but how does your subconscious, how does your nervous system really feel about that? Right? Yeah. Like, so yeah. yeah, definitely agree with you that fear of success is one of the most, um, it's one of the biggest things that hinder people in, in their ability to really, to really go after what they desire. Now, if you had to summarize everything we talked about today, like what are some important things you'd like to emphasize to the listeners, you know, from the discussion we had? That's so good. I think, you know, getting clarity on what you want to do. Mm -hmm. who you want to be and how you want that to feel being unapologetic about the priorities that you want to set for yourself as you develop your brand and your business. And then having, um, you know, having that desire, that passionate desire to continue to go after that so yeah. that, you know, the, the obstacles, the hard times, the self-doubt are just going to be little pebbles on the road and, and not, you know, rocks that are going to not boulders that are going to keep you from, from doing the thing that needs to get done. I love it. I love it. Can you tell everybody all the services that you provide? 
Yes, of course. I'm actually really excited about a masterclass that I'll be teaching on August 20th. There is going to be a replay available also. So if you're listening to this after August 20th, make sure you find me anyway, and let's talk about it. The class is going to be a ton of fun. This masterclass is called Captivate, Unleash Your Brand's Magnetic Power. And it is a masterclass to help you develop a brand that is an immediate yes to your ideal clients. Picture this. When people land on your page, on your social media, you know, wherever it is that you're bringing in these leads, it's the same as if they walk into your living room. If your Mm -hmm. living room just looks and sounds generic, it feels generic, there's no reason why they'd want to go explore the rest of the house, right? Right. When you can develop a living room, or in other words, a brand that really speaks to the soul and feels like home to your clients, that as soon as they land on this living room, as soon as they land on your page, on your profile, they are curious about every nook and cranny of the things that you talk about, of the way that you have it set up, of the the way that... Um, it feels the way it smells, the lighting is perfect, the the temperature in the room is perfect. And then you come and you offer them a glass of wine or water or tea or coffee. Now they're yeah. dying to see what's next. They're the ones that are like, where'd you get that? How did you accomplish this? What about this other thing over here? How do I learn more? Can I check out the backyard? What do you have in the bedrooms? That's how you get them to want to pay to see the rest of the house, to get access to the rest of your knowledge and your business. And so what this masterclass is going to do is I'm going to dedicate three hours to helping you to develop a brand that is that deep, a brand that goes deeper than I help so-and-so achieve so-and-so by blah, 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 because that's what everybody's doing. And here's how you know if this masterclass is for you. Open up your Instagram and take a look at the last four posts, whether you post on Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook, wherever, whatever social media platform you're on, take a look at your last four posts and look at them objectively. Not that you're so proud you posted, but pretend you're a client that just landed on that post and read. Does it sound like everybody else in your industry? Are you using the same words and the same methods and the same storytelling as everybody else in your industry? If you are, then this masterclass is for you. Because if you sound and look like everybody else, why the hell would anybody want to take out their wallet and pay you? Right. You need to have a brand that feels like home to your ideal clients. And that comes from developing it on a much deeper level than I help so-and-so achieve so-and-so. And And it has nothing to do with logos and colors and fonts. It has everything to do with the essence and the core and the values of your brand. And so that's exactly what we're going to work on. And this is Captivate, Unleash Your Brand's Magnetic Power. And we're going to be teaching this masterclass on August 20th. You can get more info at seizinghappy.com or find us on Instagram at seizinghappy. Wonderful. Now, if people want to contact you, do they go to seizinghappy.com? Yeah, there is a contact us form on the website at seizinghappy.com. But I'm also in my DMs. I love, love, love chatting uh, with listeners, with people who just find, you know, our seizing happy little corner of the internet. And so definitely jump into the DMs and let me know that you've come from this podcast. I love it. I love yeah. it. <laughs> I, you know, I love talking to you. You are just like a ball of energy. And <laughs> you are. And, you know, everything you do and everything you say comes from the heart. And, you know, I really admire you and and everything that you've done so far. You've come a long way. And I got to give you kudos. I'm honored (laughs) to have you on this show. And you're just a wonderful person. You really are. Thank you so much. It's always such a pleasure to chat with you as well. And I'm glad we actually recorded it this time. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Gigi, you have a great day and I look forward to talking to you soon. Absolutely.